Okay, this is page two of your placement test um, on the advanced algebra. All right, which of the following the graph is a function where y equals f of x? Remember, for functions, each y has one x. And if you would graph that, um, it would pass the vertical line test. So the only function that would pass the vertical line test here on number six is C. Okay. Um, next, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this guy? So this is one where you would work with the choices. Hopefully when you notice that the three is in front of the x squared, you would quickly eliminate choices C and D. So then it just becomes a matter of checking these two. Um, the middle term is what's going to be an issue here. And if it's me personally, I like to, I don't know if you can see that highlight, look at that and then distribute the three last. Um, so that would be, ooh, that would be three times x squared minus two x minus eight. That's from x times x is x squared minus four x plus two x. So it's a negative two x minus eight. Distribute the three, three x squared. That would be a minus six x. So a is out, which leaves b by default. Now, some of you don't like to circle answers by default. You like to make sure that you can see that it's right, and that's fine. If I take x minus two times x plus four, that's x squared plus four x minus two x, which is plus two x minus eight. Then distribute the three, and that's the plus six x that we need. All right, number eight, a biologist puts an initial population of 500 bacteria into a growth plate. Um, the population is expected to double every four hours. So which of these would tell how many bacteria there would be after X days? Okay, uh, this one's a hard one. I think you'll miss this one. Um, look what's the same in all of these. The 500 is that initial condition on A times B to the X. So that is the initial condition. And then if it doubles, it's multiplying by two each time. So this takes out C and D. So we're gonna take 500 times two. Is it gonna be to the X? Cause that would be the A times B to the X form or where's the six even coming from? Well, they want to know about days and it is doubling every four hours. So way to think about that. If we had one day and it started with 500, how much bacteria would that give me? Well, 500 in one day, it would double to a thousand in four hours. In four more hours, we were at 2000. That's way too many zeros. Then 4,000, that's every four hours. If it's one day, I don't want to just double it once. I'm going to have to double it six times. So that answer is B as in boy. I expect you to miss number eight, and that's going to be okay. Um, which of the following values of X satisfies this equation? You could plug them in and guess and check. That'd be a good method. You can get zero on one side and solve. If you have X squared plus five X, and I would subtract five here, minus 14 equals zero, then this can factor. Um, it would be a plus seven and a minus two. So X equals negative seven or positive two. So my answer I think is D. If you wanted to plug that back in to make sure, you could. Uh, negative seven times negative seven is 49, plus five times negative seven is minus 35, minus nine, that will equal five. Uh, number 10, it's a nice little parabola. And look, they showed us the x-intercepts. If you knew that the x-intercepts told you factored form, um, you would probably know right away that the answer is going to be C. Um, hopefully you would have got rid of choice B and D because those are frown or face parabolas. That negative in front tells me it would be frowny face. If you were nervous and wanted to go ahead and um, graph this, that fine. 
Um, and notice the negative 8 is the correct y-intercept, so it's tempting as well to use a. Um, if I change that to vertex form, it would be a minus 1 squared. I'd put a 1 in the corner. Oh, I said the answer is C. That's wrong. I didn't look closely. I just assumed because I saw those x-intercepts, guys. Look, the x-intercepts would have been 2 and negative 4 here. So I'm sorry for saying that. This is going to be the right guy because if I put 1 in the corner and I subtracted 9, that would get me to my vertex. If you wanted to plug in some points here to make sure, like if this was a no calculator portion, um, a good point to plug in would be 2, negative 8 maybe. Oh, a little glitchy, sorry. You can plug some of these guys in. Like I said, B and D are obviously out. But look what happens when I plug in 2 here. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 8 plus 4, that would be 0 too. That would have got rid of this one. If I plug this guy in, 2 squared is 4, minus 4, minus 8. That is the negative 8. The answer is A is an apple. Okay, which of these describes the range? We're going to learn about this now. I think you might be able to get it right, especially if you had a graphing calculator. Um, but if not, this is what we call a fourth degree polynomial or a quartic polynomial. Anything with degree 4 is going to be a U-shaped graph. And this one is going to be frown or face because of the negative. And the plus 7 is going to move it up. It's going to move it up 7, and we're going to have a frown or face, a little bit narrower than most. But when it's talking about the range, it's talking about the down and up. It is going down forever, but it's going to cap out here at 7. So why is it to be less than or equal to 7? And that answer is C is in cat. Um, I think on this page you could have missed number 11 and been okay and 8 and been okay. So I'll do the next page here in a minute.